Senator Bryce. Thank you, Mr Acting Deputy President. Our environment is under attack like never before, and we are feeling it in Victoria. We're facing climate disaster due to our reliance on polluting fossil fuels, seeing unprecedented species loss, and our dig it up, ship it out mentality to our natural resources prevails in the face of all evidence that this is an unsustainable way to manage our economy and our environment. But Tony Abbott wants to make our environment laws even weaker. Senator Rice, would you refer to the Prime Minister by his appropriate title? Prime Minister Abbott wants to make our environment laws even weaker. Hacking away at vital safeguards and calling it cutting red and green tape, it's selling out our future. We can't leave protecting Australia's environment up to the states. As my colleagues in this place have pointed out time and time again, if we had given state governments sole control of national environmental law in the past, the Franklin River would be dammed, there'd be oil rigs on the Great Barrier Reef, we'd have cattle grazing in the Alpine National Park, and the Traveston Dam would have gone ahead, all with outrageous environmental impacts. The Greens are standing up to the Abbott government's plan to hand off national environment law to the states. And we're also working in our own patches for a clean, green future. In my home state, Victorians have welcomed with open arms my state Greens colleagues' environmental policies and initiatives that we're taking to this weekend's state election. Because we know that the health of our economy will be based on how well we shift to a clean energy economy and protect our natural heritage. We understand that a healthy economy, healthy society and healthy environment are completely interconnected. You can't have one without the other. We need to be building our natural capital rather than destroying it. Shifting to a clean energy economy is a win-win-win, providing jobs, building wealth and creating a safe climate and healthy environment all at once. Victoria stands to lose so much from climate change. And we don't see our federal government standing up against the threats. Our farmers are facing a bleak future with the threat of worse and more prolonged droughts. This summer is looking like it's going to be particularly grim. Global warming threatens to reduce Australia's livestock carrying capacity in the vicinity by 40 per cent, and crops like canola, wheat and barley will be absolutely challenged by increasing temperatures. Heat waves are going to hit Victoria like never before. People living in Melbourne and other urban centres are going to suffer health threats, excessively hot days taking a huge toll on our community's most vulnerable. The young, the elderly and the sick suffer most on hot days, and this is worsened in the centre of our cities. Heat-related deaths will increase, and we need a plan that is really going to effectively mitigate this threat. The increase in prevalence and severity of extreme weather associated with climate change is going to place a huge strain on Victoria. No one wants to live through bushfires like what those we saw in 2009. And while Prime Minister Abbott and his government insists on wrecking our land, our water, our environment, the Greens in Victoria have a set of ideas that respond to 21st century challenges. We've got a plan to retire dirty coal plants and create jobs as we shift to renewable energy. In Victoria, we do have the dubious honour of producing the dirtiest energy in Victoria. But we don't need so many brown coal electricity generators. Renewable energy has been doing its job, and we now have an excess of electricity in the grid. So shifting, really encouraging that transition to clean energy generation makes sense for our environment, and it makes sense for jobs. More people are employed putting solar panels on roofs than in the entire coal mining industry. Clean energy is not a threat, but it's an employment opportunity right around Victoria for places like Anglesey and the Latrobe Valley. We can shift our energy mix to wean Victoria off coal, and we are supporting communities supported by threatened by mining companies and want a permanent ban on fracking onshore gas and new coal mines in Victoria, because Victorians want to see a fast shift away from fossil fuels to a clean energy future. We've a, we plan to support the growth of wind farms, creating jobs and investment in Aboriginal areas. And we do want to establish the Great Forest National Park, 
just east of Melbourne, for all Victorians to enjoy, rather than leaving it shut off for all but those who drive the loggers' trucks. This important plan will protect the habitat and ecosystem of our animal emblem, the lead-beater's lead possum, which is, we expect, going to be reclassified as critically endangered next month. We need the National Park for tourism, for regional revitalisation and for opening up Victoria's forests for generations, of enjo generations to enjoy. Now, I must address the furphy that by establishing na national parks you are increasing bushfire risk. The science shows very clearly that if you leave forests to grow old, they are less susceptible to fire, and that younger forests, such as those created by um, regeneration after clearfield logging, are much more susceptible to fire and are putting our communities at risk. But we've got the, the good news is we have enough plantation estate to serve our wood products industry. Already over two-thirds of Victoria's wood production comes from plantations and it's increasing every year. Only 10 per cent of the forest industry jobs in Victoria are in native forests and that number is in decline. The growth for our timber industry is in plantations. We can all agree on this. I think we just, the way to end the rancor, to end the division, is to be accepting that we need to be moving our logging industry, industrial scale logging, out of our native forests and to be having our wood products industry be based on plantations. But we're going backwards. What's left of our native forests is under threat. And the Prime Minister and his government are falling into lockstep with his Victorian mates who want to perpetuate the destruction of our native forests and subsidise those who do this dirty work. And the government's direct action policy, sadly, is set to do just this. The clean energy package, which it replaced specifically did not allow the use of wood from native forests to be used as part of a carbon farming initiative or to be eligible for renewable energy certificates, for good reason. Just as wood chipping has been cast as an industry that uses waste wood, it in reality is the tail that wags the dog. And twice as many logs get sent off as chip logs as saw logs, and over 80 per cent of the volume of wood comes out of our forests, ends up as wood chips. And now, just as the global market for Australian wood chips is in decline, as we're being outcompeted by plantation um, chips from elsewhere in the world, just as the wood chip mill in Eden is about to stop taking chips from East Gippsland, establishing forest furnaces to be, bu to be burning native forest wood is set to take over. And we've already seen the indications of what's likely to be in store. Brickworks. The Liberal Party's very large donor has announced in, immediately after the announcement of the direct action package how they were potentially interested and, in fact, very interested in the potential of using native forest wood to be helping to be feeding their kilns. This is not renewable energy. This is not something that should be supported under a carbon farming initiative aimed at reducing the impacts of climate change. By using native forest-based wood, by perpetuating industrial-scale logging of our forests, it is going to be increasing the impact of climate change. It is going to be reducing our carbon stores. It's going in exactly the wrong direction. The carbon density of, a, of Victoria's forests is incredible, which is why they are so important as, as carbon stores. We've got century-old trees that rival Californian redwoods in their size and their environmental significance. Now, Mount Nash. Our mountain ash is the tallest hardwood tree in the world. It grows extraordinarily quickly, reaching its maximum height in 200 years, a rate five times faster than the redwoods. But it's as carbon stores that our mountain ash forests are the world's best. They store three times the amount of carbon as the forests of the American Pacific Northwest. These forest ecosystems, just to the northeast of Melbourne, do the heavy lifting in maintaining our carbon stores. The land use um, report that Beyond Zero Emissions had a session on here in Parliament today said protecting our native forests, leaving them to recover, is the best thing we can be doing to be sequestering carbon in Australia. We've only got 1 per cent of our original forest cover left in Victoria, yet our governments federally and in Victoria are standing by while our money is being spent on subsidising the clear fell logging of these forests. But together we can protect what we love about Australia. 
We must protect our land, our water and our natural wonders that we, so we can have them to share for generations to come. Your time has expired.